How beautiful is that? Oh. I'm Brian Boitano. This is a workout. And this is Favalli di Malvaro, the northern Italian village where every Boitano comes from. Eh? A couple of years ago, I visited. I smell cooking. And met Luciano, who turned out to be my cousin. He introduced me to the rest of the family. Boitano's everywhere. And they helped me find a house. Fix it up. Mmm, sweet. And their cooking inspired great meals that I'm going to share with you. Smell this. That's looking good. <laughs> Salud. I was in Favale, home of the Boitanos. Hi. Are you a Boitano? Oh. And my cousin Luciano urged me to buy a house here and bring my American friends. How cool would that be to own a house in Boitano land? Luciano showed me several old Boitano homes, all abandoned and in complete disrepair. And the third house belonged to my family, the Boitanos, who went to America. I knew at that moment I wanted to make that my villa. Only problem was everyone in the family owned a piece of it, so I made them an offer. I think I just got my dream house. I need to buy myself a pig and a rooster, and I have so many things to do. So after six months of renovating everything, the kitchen, dining room, living room, bathroom, and bedrooms, it's time for me to move in and join the Italian Boitano clan. And I'm gonna kick it all off by having the whole family over for dinner and create a menu inspired by the food of favale. Wow, this is gonna be fun, cooking for my Italian family in Italy. The first thing I need is great pasta, and who better to ask than Cousin Luciano? Ciao! He told me about Dasso, a family-owned shop that's been making fresh pasta for more than 20 years. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. These pasta places exist in every town and village in Italy. Look at how great this looks. And salty al mano. Just means by hand, right? By hand. Yeah. yeah. Roberta Dasso runs the shop with her parents and six other workers. Let's go back and make some of this. They call their workshop the laboratory, the perfect marriage of old world and high tech. Brian Boitano. Hi, guys. What's this right here? Ricotta. Ricotta, spinach, has parmesan salt. Very simple, huh? Majorana. Oh, marjoram. Yes, with uh, oh, wow. garlic. Smell that. <laughs> so that potato is going to be gnocchi. Yes. Uh -huh. Flour, potatoes, and salt. That's Nothing it. More. Is that like a family secret recipe? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no egg wash or anything to. No. They stay together. Can I try to make one of those? Yes, sure. This is a Dasso specialty, tortelloni and I get to make them. Oh, she folds it a little shy of the line right there. Like that? Yours is prettier, though. Okay, okay. It's good? These are my little babies. They're gonna be sold to an Italian mama and she's gonna cook them in her kitchen. I'm so proud, I'm a proud papa. I love the corsetti. I've never done it before, though. I have this, but I've never done it. You just cut it here? Yeah. Corsetti are unique to Liguria. They're stamped with cool designs and perfect for holding sauce. Aren't those nice? I think they're great. Love these. Dasso's artisanal pasta is such a crowd pleaser, and tomorrow morning, they'll start all over again. That trip to Dasso was so cool. They have so many different types of pasta in Italy, things that we haven't even seen in America. But one of the pastas that really caught my eye was this trofier. This is gonna be perfect with my basil cream sauce. Two teaspoons of olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna just let this melt. All right, in goes some of the basil, just until it wilts. Ooh, see that pop? Oh, I wish you could smell this. Basil and butter, come on. What's not to love? All right, now I'm gonna add a cup and a half of the cream, 
And while this is cooking down and getting really thick and rich, I'm gonna get my trophy in the water. Salt the water. Being fresh pasta, this is gonna cook really quickly. All right, the basil in the sauce is gonna cook down and it's gonna have a mild flavor. And the basil that I put at the end is gonna have a real fresh, really lively basil finish. So I'll pick about a half a cup more. Let's check out my sauce. Oh, that's looking good. I'm gonna salt and pepper this. My pasta is already done, so I'm gonna get that out while the sauce still cooks. All right, this looks good. It's nice and thick. I'm gonna get this in the blender with a fresh basil, buzz it up, and my sauce is gonna be done. Check out that color. All right, ready for a taste? I am. Mm. I tell you, you can't beat basil in Genoa. And this trophier, it's a great pairing. It's a match made in heaven, I tell you. Or in Italy, at least. Italy is heaven. Hmm. Okay. I've got the pasta. The menu needs a good apertivo. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. My cousin Marcello has gardens all over the surrounding hills, and he offered to let me use anything I want for the party. Oh my gosh, these are, wow, these are beautiful. This is Swiss chard. Yeah. Wow. Questo lasativo. Lasativo. To go in the bathroom. Is it flowers? <laughs> to go in the bathroom. Boca che non disinfetta. When you're constipated, you eat this. I'll, I'll save this one for later. See, so this is this is turning rosso red, so he knows it's ready to pick. Dopo domani pronte mangiare. Yeah, two, in two days. Questa? No. See? Okay. Wow. <laughs> now that's a green bean. Ah, oh, your numero uno basil? Un odore di più buono forte. Beautiful. It has a, it has a, like a slight licorice, licorice smell. Ready? Oh, you got to smell this. Smell this. Questa uva americana. For uh, vino? Questa qui matura pronta, eh? Questa pronta. Nera, nera. Yeah. America. I like the Stati Uniti. I like the Nebulo better. I don't capisco io. These gardens give me a lot of tasty ideas. And with Marcello's basil and tomatoes, my apertivo's coming up. The Boitonos of Favalli di Malvaro have opened their hearts to me, so now I'm opening up my newly renovated home to them for a housewarming dinner. I've got my pasta course, and because of Marcello's vegetable garden, I was inspired to make Brian's bruschetta. Crispy Italian artisan bread. It's gonna be the perfect bed. I'm gonna just take four of these really great tomatoes and I'm gonna grate them. This is exactly what you want. It's the perfect texture to go on top of that bread. Now I'm gonna strain these because I don't want the juice. I just want that pure tomato flavor in a pulp. Now I'm gonna chop up my basil and the tops of those tomatoes. All right, let's get this all put together. Pulp in the bowl, a little salt, a little pepper, season to taste, and then chopped tomato and basil. I mean, honestly, can it get easier than this? And you won't believe the taste. One more thing, olive oil. This is my nice finishing olive oil, about a quarter of a cup. Have a bite. This bread is gonna hold up really well for this mixture to sit on top and it'll absorb all the juices from the tomatoes and it'll still be a little tender on the inside. That's what I like about this. Oh, and look, there's not enough room, but there's room on this plate for my piece. All right. Mm. Hear the crunch of the bread? It's so delicious. It's a perfect thing to serve at parties. And Marcello will definitely be over here for some of these tomatoes. Luciano's invited me over for lunch with the family, and his mother, Ennis, is doing the cooking. 
I'm looking forward to getting some tips on her famous chestnut flower gnocchi. Chestnut trees thrive in this region, so chestnut flower, or castagna, is a staple, and they even call it the grain that grows on trees. It delivers a wonderful, sweet flavor. These are beautiful. So the castagna is, um, oh, so this is the castagna. Castagna, So it's a little brown. Mmm. Mmm. It's dolce. Mmm, sweet. <laughs> you do one. Uno e uno. Oh, she's so good. Santa. No. Ah, duh. Uh, you, need some, you need some work. No, she's. Ah, really hard, like smudge it. Yeah! Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's creamy. Cremosa. Yeah. Perché cremosa? Io faccio cuocere il basilico mm -hmm. perché stando al sole diventa un po' più duro. Eh. Non lo faccio nel mortaio. Rimane più crema. Pinoli. What's interesting is she cooks it and she puts uh, some garlic cloves in the pot with it, cooks it, and then removes the garlic when it's finished. So it gives it a little bit of a garlic flavor, a hint, but it's not overly garlicky at all. I got a lot of pressure because Ennis did not drop one. How come some people say castagno? I thought it was hard to go from gas to electric. <laughs> this would be impossible. How do you regulate the heat? I don't, I mean, it's, I don't know. Questo era il mangiare dei poveri. Polenta, wow. He's saying that polenta used to be the food of the poor people because it's easy to make. It's just corn and water, and it was cheap to make, but now, um, everybody eats it, and it's like, wow, polenta, that's great, I love it. <laughs> I can't believe that she stirs this herself. This is actually pretty, um, pretty thick. I mean, you'll build up your arms doing this. La mangiamo. Is good? Avete fame? Fame? I'm not tired, no. No, oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. Oh, she wants me to do it faster. She's, see, she's got it down. This is so cool. Another kitchen. Luciano's dad Guido arrived home for lunch and showed me a not-so-typical kitchen tool in America, but one that's common in Italy. And the sweet aroma of this prosciutto is making me so hungry. This is the cima. The outside is veal. Inside is veal parts, maybe some brain, uh, with breadcrumbs, some spinach. They take the veal exterior, put all the ingredients inside, they make a bag out of it, and they sew it up. And they put it in the boiling water, and then when they take it out, it's uh, shrunk down a little bit, and then they slice it, and it looks really beautiful on the plate. But this is a real typical Ligurian dish. Okay, it's time to eat. Chestnut flour gnocchi with pesto, prosciutto, polenta, and the cima, this is real Italian comfort food, and there's plenty of time to enjoy it. Lunch lasts for two hours. Un brindisi a Brian, va? Un brindisi. Grazie mille. Grazie. Next, it's my take on classic gnocchi and a taste of vintage Boitano. That's good. On a trip to Italy, I discovered Favalli di Malvaro, the town where every Boitano in the world originated. My newfound family helped me find an old Boitano house. I renovated it. That looks awesome. And now I'm having everyone over to thank them for welcoming me and making me feel so at home. Tomatoes drizzled with a little olive oil, salt and pepper, put under the broiler, these are gonna go in my gnocchi with roasted tomato sauce. Onions, olive oil. Give those a little stir. No better smell than onions and olive oil. Add a little salt and pepper. Gotta chop me some garlic. So I added the onion first because I want those to get translucent. And if I add the garlic at the same time, 
most likely the garlic's gonna burn, and you don't want burnt garlic. All right, garlic goes in. I'm also gonna add a little red pepper flake, just about a teaspoon. Now for my roasted tomatoes. All right, get these mixed in. All right, so now I'm gonna add some of the reserved tomato juice from my bruschetta that I made. A little white wine. Give it a little stir. And now I'm gonna let that cook down a little bit. The wine's gonna evaporate. It's gonna get a little bit thicker and it's gonna be really tasty. Time to get started on my gnocchi. Well, you can't have gnocchi without potato. And I'm using a red potato. So I'm gonna just rice these. This is fun. All right, so to this, I'm gonna add one egg. And the other thing is, I'm gonna add the flour really slowly because you can always add more flour, you can't subtract flour. Good old fashioned tools of the hands. The consistency I'm looking for is a dough that holds together for the gnocchi, but you don't want it stretchy like a pizza dough. All right, so I'm gonna dust my cutting board. Roll my gnocchi dough into a ball. Cut it into four pieces. Start rolling these out to little snakes. How much more Italian can you get than making gnocchi in Italy? I graduated top in my class in Play-Doh rolling in kindergarten. Just saying. I'm gonna cut these into one inch sections. Now I'm ready for my little gnocchi board. It's just a little paddle with grooves and what those grooves are gonna do is hold on to that sauce. If you don't have a tool like this, you can always use a fork. Not only do these ridges hold sauce, they also have this little tunnel that holds a lot of sauce. These are gonna cook quickly. As soon as they float, they're done. That's like three or four minutes. I'm gonna finish off the sauce with about eight leaves of basil and a handful of parsley and get it in there. A little stir. Wow, how beautiful is that? All right, I'm gonna get my gnocchi out. It's sauce time. Time to taste. Mm. The charred skin on the tomatoes with my really nicely soft gnocchi. I think Luciano's mom would be pretty proud. Luciano and I stopped over to Cousin Giovanni's. He's been making his own wine for years. Look at the grapes. He just picked these literally a minute ago. First step, crush all the grapes, stems and all. <laughs> God, this is so cool. Like this? Yeah? Oh. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. Then Giovanni lets the crushed grapes sit for two weeks in a fermenting tank. Next, a couple of doors down is his sister Maria, and she has the wine press. Wow. That's so cool. Like this? Oh. Ah. And it just goes and then it comes off the bottom. He gathers it in a bucket. He puts it in one of those big, huge wine jugs. It ferments even more, and then he puts it into smaller bottles, and it's wine. Dai, salute dei voi Salute, salute. Maria. Giovanni, that's good. Vineyard di Giovanni. Vigna di Giovanni. Yeah. Is that bay leaves? Maria cut some of her fresh herbs for me for the party, and she gave me some great grilling tips. Sulla bistecca, fantastic. It's just to give it a little bit of a flavor of the bay leaf, and I've never never really heard of that. Another Italian uh, thing that they do that I, I never knew. Favalli's not far from the sea, and when we come back, we'll dive into a local favorite, and it's into the woods for flavor. I've been back in Favale, northern Italy's Boitano headquarters, for just a few days, and with the inspiration of bruschetta and homemade gnocchi, the plans for my housewarming dinner are really taking shape. 
With favoli so close to the Mediterranean, we really have to include some seafood. So I'm making my shrimp scampi with chickpea mash. Got my chickpeas going here, little olive oil, chicken stock, red pepper flakes, and garlic, and it smells incredible in here. Just, just a rough mash. I like keeping it really chunky and with some of the whole chickpeas still in it, but it's time for a taste. tastes really good, and it's going to be the perfect bed to absorb all my juices in my shrimp scampi. These are my Ligurian shrimp. Ligurians eat a lot of seafood because they're right on the coast, and there's so much seafood here, and shrimp is definitely at the top of their list. Now that's a flame. About two tablespoons olive oil. And this is gonna be really fast because you just wanna put the shrimp in there until they turn pink. You don't wanna overcook them, they cook really, really fast. I'm gonna get my parsley chopped up, so we're ready to go when these are done. All right, let's check out my shrimp. Perfect, pink on one side, I'm gonna to toss them, and it's almost time to add all the other things. All right, to this, I'm gonna add one clove of garlic, chopped. About a quarter of a cup of white wine, the juice of half a lemon. Make sure you don't get any of the seeds in there. Squeeze it into your hand. Handful of parsley, one tablespoon of butter to finish it off. All right, I told you that was fast. All right, shrimp time. Oh, all those juices are gonna be absorbed by the chickpeas. What is not to love? Shrimp, garlic, white wine. What, you mean it's time for a taste? Well, I don't mind. Little chickpea, little shrimp, the perfect bite. Mm. This is gonna be a great way to start a party. As the newest member of the Favali Boitanos, I've been invited to the town's annual Feast in the Woods. Even though I'm new here, I feel right at home. I think that the food really brings us together. Those are amazing. You can make jam out of this. A little chicken and rice, anyone? How about some fresh tomato salad? And steak cooked on a slate slab. Wow, this smells so good. Even Enzo, who renovated my house, is doing his specialty, testaroli. Crisp, crepe-like, served with a chocolate hazelnut spread. Or my favorite, pesto. Sweet or savory, Enzo's testaroli are a big hit, and I cannot wait to get back into the kitchen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Being on that hillside and having a barbecue was so incredible. And I even said to Enzo, I need that recipe for testaroli, and he gave it to me. The batter is basically equal parts water and flour. Also, about a teaspoon of salt. Enzo uses sparkling water, and I asked him, how come you use sparkling water instead of flat water, what people usually use? And he said, it's, it's better. And I said, well, why is it better? And he said, it's just better. My theory is that it makes it a little bit lighter and the batter fluffs up a little bit better. The consistency of the batter should be somewhere between a pancake and a crepe batter. And I'm gonna let this rest and get started on my pesto. This is a quarter cup olive oil, and I have two cloves of garlic that I'm just gonna smash. When you heat up olive oil, it sometimes loses its flavor, so I just wanna put enough olive oil in this to take the garlic flavor, and then I'll add the rest of the olive oil later. About three minutes until it starts browning, 
Smells really good in here. So on to the next step. Pulse about a quarter of a cup of pine nuts. And now the basil. For some reason, the basil in Northern Italy, just, it smells different. I don't know what it is. It's a real mild fragrance. It seems a little bit like licorice to me, but it makes for an absolutely incredible pesto. Time to add my garlic infused olive oil and make sure you get every little drop because that's all flavor that you don't want to miss. Add the rest of my olive oil. All right, can't forget Parmesan cheese. I was asking my cousin Ennis if she toasted the pine nuts because I know a lot of people do that in America, uh, including myself sometimes, and she said, oh, absolutely never toast pine nuts. And a lot of my friends actually add lemon juice as well, and she said, oh, never, never add lemon juice. But the one thing that we can agree on is that great Parmesan cheese really makes it tasty. Perfect. It smells incredible. And now my testaroli. Now I have a little olive oil on a paper towel here. This is gonna help these brown and it's also gonna make it not stick. Medium low heat. Spread it around a little bit. You only get one chance to do this. All right, how do you describe testaroli? Well, it's chewy like a pita, and it's thin like a crepe. It's a little bit crunchy on the outside, and it's the perfect base for the really flavorful pesto. Time to flip. Oh, Enzo's got some competition here. I'm ready for the Testaroli Olympics. That one's got my name right on it, B-R-I-A-N. See if I can replicate that taste that Enzo gave us at the barbecue. All right, so just about a little teaspoon. A nice thin coat, you don't want to overpower it. How simple is that? You fold it over like the Italians do? That would be me, I'm Italian. And take a bite. Mm. It's so simple, but the flavors are so good. We're almost there. What's left? A nice juicy steak and a primo dessert for my party. The menu for my dinner party is really shaping up, and cousin Giovanni has a surprise for me. Ciao, Giovanni. Is that a porcini? A porcini, oh my gosh. He just went and picked porcinis up this hill. That's crazy. Steak and mushrooms. Steak and porcini mushrooms. How good is that? Along with the herbs that Maria gave me. It's amazing. Giovanni told me that they uh, come up overnight, so he can go out every day and find a different porcini or maybe multiple porcinis. Those are not a prop, I swear. My family's always talking about how they go hunting for wild porcinis in the hills just on the other side of this house. That's just how they live in Italy. Well, you know what I say, when your family gives you a great basket of mushrooms, you gotta make something really special. And that's what I'm doing with my grilled steak and porcini mushroom sauce. If you've ever had a portobello, uh, this is that flavor intensified. Three tablespoons of olive oil in the skillet, it should be smoking hot. I'm gonna get a little salt and pepper in here. Stir them up and don't move them around too much because you really want them to caramelize. All right, so while these are cooking down, they're gonna take about 10 minutes. I'm gonna get started on my steak. I don't know, I'm having a hard time concentrating because look where we are. Can you see that? Five minutes ago, it was raining cats and dogs and now the waterfalls in the hills are flowing. I can hear the river. It's just the most beautiful place. But I gotta get going on my steak. A little salt, pepper. All right, I'm gonna get this on the grill. Maria Boitano had a really fun tip. She takes rosemary and bay leaf and puts it on the grill and sets the steak on top of it so the meat gets infused with that smoky herb flavor. You like my side table? It's a stump. 
chestnut tree stump. Time to turn the steak. Got to get my bay leaf and rosemary for the other side. Uh, look at that. I wish you could smell this charred bay leaf and rosemary. It smells so good. All right, it's time for me to check on my mushrooms. Ah, the mushrooms look great. They're nice and brown and crunchy. I'm going to deglaze the pan with brandy. Scratch off all these brown, crunchy bits on the bottom. And that's where all the flavor is. Add about a cup and a half of cream. And when this cooks down, it's going to be thick and rich, creamy, brandy-y. It's going to be everything. This looks great. Check out these grill marks on the steak. Doesn't it look beautiful? That smoky bay leaf and rosemary smell, it's incredible. So I'm going to let this rest, and I'm going to check out my porcinis. Oh, it's great. It's thick and rich. And now, Swiss chard with pancetta. Please welcome Marcello's Swiss chard. You can leave the rib in. I usually take it out. I just tear it rustically off that, tear it again, right into the fat of the pancetta. A little salt, a little pepper. This chard is a great side dish for the steak. Time to take it off. That pancetta smell is great. Gonna add some pine nuts. It'll add a little sweetness and a little crunch, too. Time for my pancetta. Oh, it's really crispy. All right, my last ingredient is a dried sheep's milk ricotta, and I'm gonna just grate that over the top. All right, my steak's been resting. I think it's time to slice it up. All right, this smells too good, I can't resist. Mmm. <laughs> Salty and smoky from that grill. Mm, it's amazing. It's going to even be better with that sauce on it. All right, time to taste that. My stomach is grumbling. Mm. The creaminess of the sauce, the porcini tastes amazing. And the smokiness of those herbs adds so much to that steak. Right? Swiss chard. Mmm. The pancetta is really salty, which is great. That cheese is a little sweet. And those greens, they taste so good. I think these are persimmons, but they're green. The Ligurian region of Italy, or the Italian Riviera, produces incredible fruit. Niente veleno, eh? Niente up. So these are white peaches. Hmm. Maybe it's the combination of the hot sun and the ocean breeze, but these sweet and luscious peaches are a dessert waiting to happen. All right, the party's getting close, and every great Italian meal needs a great finish. Here's my twist on an Italian dessert, peach tiramisu. All right, I'm going to score the bottom of this peach. I got some boiling water back here, and I'm going to drop this in. This will take about 30 seconds. Drop it in some cold water to shock it, and then the peel's going to come off really easy. All right, here goes. It's much easier than taking a peeler to it, because if you take a peeler to it, it's going to bruise the flesh, and then not going to be so pretty. I'm going to dice this up and get it in with the other peaches that I've already diced. Now, I've already put lemon juice on these peaches so they don't turn brown. I'm going to mix some sugar in here and some white wine. First, the sugar. All right, a little white wine. My hands are a little slippery from the juice. All right, and I'm actually going to taste this because I need to know if I should add more sugar or not, because sometimes peaches are a little tart. Mmm, that is delicious. Great. So I'm going to hold that. I'm going to get started on the creamy stuff. This is going to be great. Have 
a vanilla bean here, half of it is gonna go into my mascarpone cheese, and half of it is gonna go into my peaches. All right, now for the creamy goodness. About two cups of mascarpone, and I brought this to room temperature so it's a lot easier to handle. Some whipped cream is gonna just lighten it all up. It's pretty much equal amounts of mascarpone and uh, whipped cream. Time to strain that peach juice. Oh wow, that's a great color. It's incredible with the peach juice and vanilla bean. Ah, oh, that's a good combination. Two lady fingers, two cuts, start dunking. So I'm just letting the juice sink into these lady fingers. It's gonna make them nice and soft and delicious. So I'm ready to set these up. A little bit of the mascarpone whipped cream combination. A couple lady fingers, some peaches, a little more cream. We're gonna keep layering it until we get to the top. Finish it off with a little cinnamon. And now it's time for a taste. My favorite part. Mm. That light whipped cream with the sweet peaches. Mm. It's really versatile, it's fresh. You can make it like this, individual servings, or I have a party coming up, so I'm gonna make it in a baking dish and give everybody individual servings that way. All right, the house looks great and the meal's almost ready. The family is on their way, and I can hardly wait until it's time to party. Discovering the Boitanos of Favali has been a real adventure. Where are these guys? The house is finally ready, and I'm excited to open the doors for everyone to see. Friends and family are arriving to kick off my housewarming dinner. There's Guido and Ennis Boitano, Lino and Giovanni Boitano, Maria Boitano, Marcello Boitano, and Luciano Boitano. This is Luciano's Nona, Nona's cheese cabinet. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Can you believe it? Uh, it's nice, huh? So far, the house is getting rave reviews. Some of my guests are even helping me in the kitchen. Enzo, protecting his reputation, is making sure my testaroli are flawless. Grazie molto. Maria, vino. This experience has been such a joy, and I'm so glad that the whole family is here. Even though I cook this meal, everyone here has been a part of it. It's really brought home how important food is to family. Traditions passed down along with treasured techniques and tips. It's a link to our ancestors that keeps evolving. A short time ago, I had only heard of this place, and now it truly feels like home. I'm so happy to be in Favale. You have been just incredible, all of you, uh, to get to know. Grazie per la vostra accoglienza. Per me è stato veramente un cento anni. With this meal, I am officially a Favale Boitano. 
and it is a night I will never forget. Salute, Salute. 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 Salute.